are these people, uh, you know, when they schedule their availability, uh, I'm sorry, I can't work weekends. Well, quick service restaurant, you're going to be working some weekends, right? So you just know I don't need to have the conversation with that person because then it's going to turn into a push, right? I'm going to push them to work outside of what they're telling me their availability is. If they say that they have open availability, that's a different story. Okay, mastering the employee schedule. That's what we want to talk about. Mastering an employee schedule is both an art and a science. Okay, um, and and while there is a lot of helpful apps out there today, and a lot of technological advancements and tools that weren't available ten years, twenty years, thirty years ago, uh, it, it does make things easier for scheduling purposes, of course. Uh, but nothing can truly replace a healthy, caring human intuition. I mean, think about it. When a person applies to your quick service restaurant, or by the way, any business for that matter, they should be prompted to list their availability on the application. So if you've created the right application in other episodes, I'll show you how to do that. By the way, I think everyone ought to have their own personalized uh, or customized application for the business. Don't just create, don't just take a template from Google Docs or from uh, Google somewhere and, and just download it and then then copy it. Make sure you're 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 choosing all the questions you want answered for your application, and one of them needs to be availability. So when somebody applies to your restaurant, there should be a question about availability. You want to know before you even schedule an interview: Are these people, uh, you know, when they schedule their availability? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't work weekends. Well, quick service restaurant, you're going to be working some weekends, right? So you just know I don't need to have the conversation with that person because then it's going to turn into a push, right? I'm going to push them to work outside of what they're telling me their availability is. If they say that they have open availability, that's a different story. So when somebody applies, make sure you have on the application a question about availability, okay? Um, once they're, uh, once you say, you know what, I like their, their application, I like their availability, I'm going to move forward with an interview. When you're in the interview, confirm their availability. Things change. Things change in your life. Things change in my life. You just want to make sure their availability is still accurate. Then, once you say, you know what, I like this person. I lie. I think they're going to be a, a great addition to the team. I'm going to go forward with hiring them. Once they're hired, you should still have them fill out an availability form. Now, think about it. The expectation has been set by the application to the interview to the actually uh, a hiring time when they're hired and you have created your own availability form possibly during that orientation their first day make sure they sign and date and fill out correctly their availability form and look has something changed or oh, wait a minute we hired you based on this availability and now you're saying that it's changed you need to look for those kinds of things some people will tell you what they want what you want to hear uh, in the interview process or through the application just to get an audience with you. And then once they get hired, they begin to change that. Make sure they stick to what they said as far as the availability. Now, as you begin to make out their schedule every week and you make it out for them and as well as the rest of the team, and you have a budgeted amount of hours, every every company does, you have labor uh, um, hours that you need to kind of control and so forth. You're going to want to schedule shifts within the availability of each employee. So because now you have this availability form, now you can schedule them, but according to their availability. Now, of course, there are occasional exceptions for uh, the times when you have to schedule them outside of their availability. But let me say this, if you ever must schedule a team member outside of their availability, what's on that availability sheet, you need to ask at least a week in advance. Ask, hey, listen, we're coming up on, it's gonna be Memorial Day or Labor Day. We're gonna be really busy around Christmas and we're gonna need all hands on deck. I was wondering, would it be possible to, to use you for two or three hours on this? I know it's outside of your availability. Have that conversation at least a week in advance. My my preference is two weeks in advance. And if you're really on top of your scheduling, you're gonna be scheduling two weeks out from that. But but think about it. You expect your team members uh, to um, to offer at least a one week, two week notice uh, for request requesting days off, right? And if you do that, then it's only considerate to approach this subject of asking them to work outside their availability with the same amount of notice. So if it's uh, two weeks to request a day off, then you need to plan two weeks to request them to work outside of their normal days off, outside of their normal availability, right? So I'm gonna be taking a closer look at this uh, very important subject and the process involved in it in upcoming episodes. But for now, this is what I want you to take away from this one, trust. 
Trust is a two-way street. And just as you expect your team to show up when they're scheduled, they're gonna expect you to schedule them when they told you they could show up, right? Within the framework of their availability. So honor your team and you'll earn their respect. And when you earn their respect, you're gonna find yourself working through scheduling difficulties, scheduling issues with a whole lot less friction.